out of bed and I stub my toe, then I might be kind of angry or kind of mad or in a grumpy mood. And then I would say, hello. Can you say hello kind of mad or grumpy or angry? Let's try again. When I get up in the morning, I always say hello. When I get up in the morning, I always say hello. Unless, unless maybe I've been really excited about playing outside all day and I wake up and I look out the window and maybe it's pouring rain and I'm a little bit disappointed and a little bit sad that I won't be able to go and play outside in the morning. So then I might say, hello. Can you say hello? Kind of sad. Let's try one more. When I get up in the morning, I always say hello. When I get up in the morning, I always say hello. Unless, unless I'm really excited. Maybe I do have plans to play outside and I look outside and the sun is shining and it's a perfect day to be out. Then I might say, hello. Can you say hello, very excited? Wonderful. So today's story time is all about dinosaurs. We're gonna start with a dinosaur poem that has some action. So I hope that you'll do them along with me. And this particular poem is by Nancy Klein. Spread your wings way out wide. Fly like a pteranodon, soar and glide. Can you soar and glide? Bend to the floor. Can you touch your hands to your feet or to the floor? Head down low. Move like a stegosaurus long ago. Reach up tall. Can you reach high, high, high? Try to be as tall as an apatosaurus eating on a tree. Using your claws, grumble and growl. Just like a Tyrannosaurus on the prowl. Wonderful. I hope you were able to be all of those different dinosaurs. Let's get started with our book. Today we're going to be reading Tiny T-Rex and the Impossible Hug. And this book is by Jonathan Stutzman and it's illustrated by Jay Fleck. And we're reading this today with permission from Chronicle Books. Now, what would make a hug impossible? Impossible is something that we can't do. So for our tiny T-Rex, it might be impossible for him to hug because Tyrannosaurus Rex only have very short arms. Do you think you could still give a hug with short arms? I think so, but maybe we'll have to read and see. I know that during this COVID-19 pandemic, sometimes hugs have been pretty impossible for us because we can't hug everyone we'd like to. And that is sometimes kind of hard, or at least I know it's been hard for me. Has it been hard for you not being able to hug everyone or all the people that are important in your life? Maybe this book will give us some suggestions about other things that we can do for those important people in our life, even if we can't hug them. Let's see. Hello, Pointy. Are you okay? No, today I feel sad. I do not want to play. Oh, pointy is very sad. I wonder why. Tiny T-Rex and the Impossible Hug. I have tiny arms. It is very difficult to hug with tiny arms. Each day I am growing taller, but my arms are still tiny. Hugging almost seems impossible for a Rex as tiny as me, but I will try anyway. Pointy needs me. Well, that's a nice thing for a friend to do. Tiny T-Rex would like to give Pointy his friend a hug to make him feel better. Where is my father? I will ask him for advice. Hello, father. Re 
Rexes are thinkers, not huggers. Perhaps instead of hugs, mathematics might be the answer to your problem. Hmm. Pointy does not like math. Math will only make Pointy feel worse. Hello, Auntie Junip. I have a problem. I must learn how to hug, but my arms are too tiny. I have found that balance is the key to every problem. Balance and freshly squeezed cucumber juice. Do you think that would be very helpful? Cucumber juice? Ugh, that is disgusting. I will ask my mother for help instead. I have fallen and now I am lost. I do not think I will find my mother in here. Well, where has he fallen? Look who found him. Hello, mother. It's okay if you can't hug, Tiny. You are good at many other things. You are kind and creative and braver than most. You are tiny, but your heart is still very big. I cannot hug with my heart, mother. I must learn to hug with my arms. Do you think you could give someone a hug with your heart? Hello, sister. Hello, brother. Please help me. Hugging is very difficult. We'd love to help, Tiny. To do the impossible, you must plan and practice. Practice, practice, practice. <gasps> Thank you, Trixie and Rari. That is good advice. That is good advice, isn't it? If there's something that we can't do, we must plan and practice. I will plan my strategy. <gasps> Look at his plans to give Pointy a big hug. Do you think any of his plans will be successful? Do you think they'll work? I will get stronger. Oh, here he is doing sit-ups and boxing and jump rope. I will practice very hard. I will practice my hugs on everything. Here he is hugging a ball and a book. Oh, and a flower hug and an ice cream hug. An ice cream hug might be kind of messy. Do you think? Whoa. Do you think a cactus would be something good to practice on? What do you think would happen if you hugged a cactus? I will not practice on that anymore. Look what happened to Tiny. He's all full of cactus needles. I am almost ready. I will practice one more time. When I'm done, I will find my friend. This tree is very big, like pointy. I will hug it. This is not a tree. I have made a mistake. Please help. From up here, everything looks tiny like me. I could hug anything I wanted. <gasps> When you go way up high in the sky, everything down below looks much smaller, doesn't it? Now I am falling. I should not have let go. Now I will never find Pointy. Where did he land? Hello, Pointy. Hello, Tiny. I am here to make you feel better. I've practiced very hard and hugged many things. My arms are still very tiny and my hugs are still tiny, but I will do my very best because you are my very best friend. <gasps> Thank you, Tiny. That was the biggest hug ever. So even though Tiny's arms <laughs> were tiny, I think it's more the feeling that went behind Tiny's hug, isn't it? That made his friend feel better. So even though we can't hug all of the people that we love in our lives right now, writing them a letter 
or calling them can be just like a hug from our heart. Should we sing a song now about dinosaurs? I've got five dinosaurs here to share. Here is dinosaur number one. What color is that dinosaur? You're right, he's white. And now we've got two dinosaurs. What color is this dinosaur? Orange, you got it. And we have three dinosaurs. This dinosaur is green. Dinosaur number four is red. And dinosaur number five, yellow. Can we count them all? One, two, three, four, five. And if you want to keep count along with me, you can put up your five fingers to show the five dinosaurs I have here on my flannel board. Five funny dinosaurs letting out a roar. One went away. And then there were four. Four funny dinosaurs munching on a tree. One went away. And now there are three. Three funny dinosaurs didn't know what to do. One went away. And now there are two. Two funny dinosaurs having lots of fun. One went away and now there are one. One funny dinosaur afraid to be a hero. He went away and now there are zero. <laughs> That's a fun one to do, isn't it? Well, I think we're ready for our goodbye song. Thank you again for joining me today for story time. I hope you let out some dinosaur roars and you thought about some different ways that you can hug just like tiny T-Rex. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them. Just like this, this, this. Roll them, roll them, roll them, roll them. And blow a little kiss. Mwah. Thank you again for joining me. Have a great day. And I hope to see you again soon for story time. Hello, my name is Sheila Tucker and I'm a volunteer presenter with the uh, program Well Now, Health Information for Better Decisions, which is hosted by the AC Hunter Library in St. John's, Newfoundland. And I'll be presenting on the topic of finding reliable health information. And I'm very pleased to offer this presentation for public information and education. So uh, this is my disclosure that I have uh, no financial or other potential conflicts of interest in relation to this presentation. So just some background information about the WellNow program in this presentation. I first delivered this in person on March 4th, 2020 as part of the WellNow program. And the goal of the WellNow program is to promote health literacy by providing participants with knowledge and skills to make more informed choices regarding their health and health care. So the objectives of this particular presentation are to highlight the importance of critical thinking about health information you see online 
to explain the criteria for evaluating online health information and identify selected sources of reliable online health information. So why is it important to evaluate online health information? Uh, the content on the internet is, this is an unregulated environment and anyone can publish anything. And while the internet contains a lot of reliable health information, which can help to inform and empower individuals in their health choices, there's also a lot of misinformation which can potentially do harm. So it's very important to distinguish between the two and protect yourself and others from harm. So the World Health Organization, I think, really put this issue on the map. Uh, within the context of the uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 uh, because they, they talk about uh, the danger of misinformation during COVID-19 and they really refer to it as an infodemic. And so they've put a lot of work into uh, posting resources on the WHO website about really immunizing the public against misinformation that can potentially do harm. So the WHO um, has, uh, is just a wealth of evidence-based information about uh, COVID-19, but many, many other health topics as well. And they actually have dedicated uh, web pages on their site, uh, you know, that include like myth, myth, buff, myth, myth busters about COVID-19. And, you know, they really talk about flattening the infodemic curve. So just as we're trying to uh, flatten the curve in terms of the COVID pandemic, we're also trying to flatten the curve in terms of uh, misinformation. So another great source of online health information is Medline Plus Guide to Healthy Web Surfing. And MedPlus is an online health library service for the public, which is provided by the National Library of Medicine in the United States. And the NLM is one of the world's largest medical libraries, and it's part of the National Institutes of Health. So Medline Plus has developed a guide to healthy web surfing, and these are highlights of the advice they provide for evaluating online health information. So they recommend that you consider the source of the information, focus on the quality of the information, have a healthy dose of skepticism. So don't be afraid to question what you're reading. Check the currency of the information because timeliness and in health information is very, very important because there are always new health research studies that influence uh, our thinking and our understanding of knowledge in the area of health information. And also to beware of bias. So look for information on the sources of funding and the purpose of the site. So are the authors, you know, what is their purpose in posting this information? Are they trying to sell something? Are they trying to inform and educate people? So what is their purpose? And are you being asked to share any personal information? Also, websites should provide a way to contact the organization or the webmaster. And if the site provides no contact information, or if you can't easily find out who runs the site, use caution. Another re great resource is the uh, National Library of Medicine, and they host evaluating health websites. So they advise that um, you ask yourself the following questions. So why did the person create the page? What's in it for them? So again, what is their purpose in creating this information? And are they trying to sell something? They encourage people to look at the accuracy of the information they're finding online. So is the information based on sound medical research? Can the information on the web page be verified by another source? Are the sources cited reliable? Are there any grammatical or spelling errors? And are the footnote, footnotes, the bibliographies or references uh, attached to the information so that you can verify this? And are they reliable? So in terms of the authority of the publisher of the information, what are their credentials and affiliations? Uh, look for uh, the, you know, the object, uh, level of objectivity of the information that you're reading. So are you picking up on any bias? Is there just sort of one point of view being conveyed? Is the information presented in a balanced way? Or is it alarmist? If it's alarmist or you know, promising 100% results uh, from, say, a pharmaceutical or a device or a procedure, you might want to look at that with caution. Also, is the information current? As I mentioned before, timeliness is very important in terms of health information. 
So look for a date on the page. Typically, you'll find it either at the top of the page or the bottom of the page. And you know, so look for a current date. If it's something that's been updated last in November of 2020, that gives you a sense that it is current and the, and the information is being maintained. If it's something like November of 2010, you might want to be very, very cautious with that because it's a red flag that the page may not be properly maintained and updated. Also coverage, so is the information complete and are there any additional resources provided for further information? Another consideration as well um, is um, uh, do the links work? So, you know, quite often with online health information, you'll see hyperlinks embedded and do those hyperlinks work? Um, if, if they don't, that might be another red flag that the site is not being properly maintained. So those are a couple of resources uh, that are hosted by US-based organization and, uh, organizations. And as well, there are a lot of organizations in Canada which are also hosting websites uh, you know, that provide uh, reliable health information. Uh, this is just one example here in Canada. The British Columbia Cancer Agency hosts evaluating health websites. And uh, they provide a lot of information about uh, how to evaluate online health information, similar to what I just reviewed. Um, but they also have a number of uh, websites uh, pertaining to cancer information uh, that are, are considered to be quite reliable and have been uh, critically vetted by their health librarians. And the um, people who maintain the site, they are uh, professional health librarians and they're inclusion and removal policy for the resources listed is publicly available on the website. So it gives you a certain degree of confidence that this information has been critically reviewed and vetted uh, for timeliness and accuracy and balance and so forth. Um, and they have included a lot of different resources on their website, books and pamphlets and multimedia. So there's a, a diverse range of resources uh, for different uh, types of people. And so uh, just some take home messages that I hope you'll remember coming away from, from this broadcast. It is important to remember that the internet is an unregulated environment and you really do need to develop critical appraisal skills in order to effectively navigate and evaluate the information you're finding online. And, but the good news is there are a number of very helpful resources and tools that are freely available I just reviewed just a few today, there are many, many others, uh, but this can help you to guide your evaluation of the online health information you're reading. So while there are lots of uh, various resources out there, they really do share some cr common criteria for you to consider. So again, look at the currency of the information you're reading, make sure that the links work, um, and you know that the, anything that it, it the, um, that you're linked to is reliable. Um, consider the funding source for the website, consider the accuracy of the information, look for any signs of bias, um, that could be a red flag, look for uh, balanced information, consider the source, consider the purpose of the site, is it um, a source that is uh, marketing a product or service, is it providing an educational or information service, so what is the purpose of the site, and the policy for the collection, use of information, and any sort of privacy guidelines, all of this should be publicly available on the site. And it's very important to remember that the ability to find and critically appraise health information should enhance communication and shared decision-making be between you and your healthcare provider, not replace advice from your healthcare provider. So to learn more, this is, you know, this is really just a beginning. There's lots more to learn about evaluating online health information. One great resource is the Medline Plus tutorial. And uh, this has multiple parts for you to delve into, you know, very detailed analysis of different types of website and give you, give you some practice really in evaluation. So it can be used online on the uh, Medli medlineplus.gov uh, site or it can be downloaded and it includes an evaluation checklist that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis for uh, your online searching. And these are, these are references for the resources that I mentioned in this presentation. I'd certainly encourage you 
to take a deeper dive into these resources because they contain a lot of helpful information as well as links to a variety of reliable online health resources. So good luck in navigating the internet. Please do use reliable resources and the tools that have been shared here today so that you can navigate safely and effectively. Thanks so much.